Hello again. And I've set myself up in the uh, forest today because a lot of the plants that I'm going to talk to you about grow in the forest. Um, and these are the kind of plants that I really like. So uh, um, let's get started. You may recall that uh, one of my other previous stories that I read to you was called The Reason for a Flower. This beautiful picture book by Ruth Heller. Uh, well, I've got another one by the same author. It's called Plants That Never Ever Bloom. And you'll see why in a few minutes, why I'm sitting in the forest, because there's lots of examples of these. So let's get started. Let's just open the first one. <laughs> I haven't even started, and there's no words, and there's beautiful picture of this lovely mushroom starting out real small and getting nice and big. All right, this book was done and uh, pu uh, published in 1984, but completely timeless because there's a whole bunch of scientific facts in here that haven't changed. Some maybe have been updated, name changes, but most of these are exactly as they've always been. Okay, a mushroom doesn't ever bloom. It grows on trees and living things. Look at these fantastic mushrooms. Lots of Lots of them, lots of different colors. I'm just gonna show you one of these. I've got lots of props today too. So this, look at this, this is a bracket fungi. It often grows on dead trees and stumps. All right. Or in the grass, in fairy rings. Look at that, beautiful. Sometimes you see these uh, in the grass. Oh, nice circles and a little hedgehog. I wish I could show you this, but I'm looking right in the eyes of a raccoon. <laughs> He's just leaving now. Um, so maybe shy, camera shy. That grows to be as tall as some of these. Look at these beautiful fungi. Tall is all relative, isn't it? Maybe these maybe are five or six inches tall. A little mouse sitting on the top of them. And some look rather strange to me. Look at all the shapes and colors, sizes. Lots of great ones. These glow at night, and we don't know why. Why do you think these glow at night? Who knows? But all mushrooms are called fungi. Try that word, fungi or fungi. Seaweed doesn't ever bloom. You see that down in the ocean if you get a chance to go down there. Some is green and often seen close to the shore. There you go, look how green that is. You'll see them growing in the intertidal zone. But there is more. Deeper down where it is, where there are several shades of brown. Look at all those. Sometimes you see some of these washed up on the shore and along the beach. In the Pacific and the Atlantic, seaweed grows to be gigantic. Yes, if you go out to Long Beach on the west coast of Vancouver and you see these kind of washed up on the shore. And this one is called feather boa kelp. That's kind of fun. Sometimes I get this rhyme wrong and I go, in the Atlantic and the Pacific, seaweed grows to be terrific. Either works, doesn't it? This mass has broken free and floats in their sargasso sea, where grumpy looking fish reside and other creatures like to hide. Look at that. That seaweed is called sargassum and it grows in the sargasso sea. You could look that up on a map or an atlas. Deepest in the ocean bed is seaweed that is pink and red. Whichever color it may be, seaweed all is called algae. All right, look at this. Look at that gorgeous pinks and purples. That's why I wore this shirt. But I want to show you this too. Look at, this is some dried red seaweed that someone made into some earrings. Isn't that fun? All right, that's algae for you. Lichen never ever blooms. It lives on logs and trees and rocks and sometimes grows on little stalks. Okay, now I want to show you a few props here. So this uh, big cedar tree behind me, it's got some lichen growing on it. I just found a little cheap 
Let's see, I can show you. Yeah, have a look there. Look at that, some lichen growing right on that big cedar tree. Doesn't hurt the tree. There's another little to show you. Um, I got more lichens. I just love lichens. And here's some of them that fell out of the tree branches. And you've probably seen these around if you go into the forest. And one more. Here's a lovely one growing on this little stick. All right. So I can see them looking like that, right? All over the place. I showed you one of these. Some growing on the trees. You might see snails going on. Uh, wandering, slithering, let's say, across the ground, too, if it's really moist out. Lush moss that clings to trees. Look at that, clinging to the trees. You might have recalled a couple of my other stories. I was sitting on the base of a mossy covered tree. And liverworts like these that grow beside a stream are green, but not a flower to be seen. Not a flower at all. Look at that. Even that frog sort of blends into all those different greens. Liverworts. What a good name, right? Ferns. Hmm, I just love ferns. Who doesn't like a good fern? Got so many. Now you, I'm sitting right here in the forest floor with lots of ferns here. These are sword ferns beside me on either side. And I have one more fern I want to show you right here. This is called a bracken fern. I had to pull it up because it was in the middle of my pathway. They just pop up sometimes all over the place. All right, and you'll find out what this is called on the next page. Ferns from Fiddleheads Unfurl. So. That was a fiddlehead that you saw here, but you'll see that on these ferns. These are called tree ferns here. Look at the fiddleheads coming out of that. And they can go really tall, many meters tall. Often in Australia and New Zealand, you'll find those. Their cousins are the horsetails and this creeping evergreen and not on any one of these are flowers ever seen. So look at these fantastic horsetails here. And this is a lycopodium creeping along. And I've got another prop here for you. So you see this horsetail here with lots of little branches on the side to side. I've got one that grows in uh, one area of the forest here nearby is also a horsetail, but it just has this just very straight Look at that, very straight. No branches. 200 million years ago, ferns were rather small. Their cousins, on the other hand, grew very, very tall. So those horsetails probably grew many meters tall, probably as, as tall as some of these dinosaurs. And I think the dinosaurs like to eat them, at least some of them did, the vegetarian ones. Okay, none of these have flowers, and so they have no seeds. They have no seeds, as I have said. They grow from tiny spores instead. Look at that. Look at all those things that we just discussed. The seaweeds and the fungi and the lichens and the liverworts and the ferns and the horsetails. Beautiful. They grow from spores. And sometimes if you look on the underside of... Uh, these sword ferns, you'll see nice little uh, spore capsules there and the spores just got spread out and you think that I'm sneezing now, just wait till that happens. <laughs> I don't know if that affects you too. But there are some exceptions. There always are a few, like the rest that never bloom, but from a seed they grew. So, so there are some plants out there that have no flowers but they just have seeds. And one is called a ginkgo. And I'm sorry I didn't bring you a prop of that. I do have a ginkgo tree in my yard. And the other is a yew. I also have a yew in my yard. So no flowers, but they have some from seeds they grow and they produce seeds. And every plant that bears a cone, and you'll know there's lots of them, like fir cones, big fir trees, Douglas, Douglas fir, 
is an exception. And proper scientific terms, all of these are called gymnosperms. What a great name, right? Look at all that. All those fantastic ferns, pine cones, fir cones, look at juniper cones. Anyway, there you go. So you get some flowers, uh, some plants, I mean, that have no flowers. Uh, the gymnosperms, which we just discussed, and then you have all the ones like mosses. Did I show you this? I think I forgot to show you the beautiful moss. Um, and the lichens. And then, of course, you get all these beautiful ferns that are behind me and beside me. I just love ferns. And the seaweeds, too, don't forget. They don't have any um, flowers. They all have spores. All right, so why don't you go out to the forest or down by the ocean and look for seaweeds, ferns, lichens, moss, and see if you can find all those ones that just have spores. All right, bye for now.